We start scooping the buttock flesh away from the sitting bones on both sides, sitting cross legs, extending the sides of the body, lengthening, and then bring the thumbs to your chest. Inhale deeply, roll the shoulders back and down, allow the upper eyelids to roll without creating any tension in your facial muscles. And then observe your breath. This is the time where you can settle your brain and settle your body to prepare for the class ahead. If you want, and if so prefer, you can take a deeper inhalation and sing three ohms. Always thinking about sitting the sitting bones and then releasing the groin area, lowering the legs, relaxing the shins, the feet. One more time, extend the sides of the body, lengthen the base of the skull up, and then take the crown of the head up to the ceiling. The inhalations and exhalations are even except for before you sing three arms. Bow your head, drop the palms on the thighs, raise your head, open your eyes and get ready for the class. So we're going to start in Adamukha Virasana. Big toes together, knees apart. The knees are as wide as your torso. Anchor the outer hips, buttocks and heels together, and then extend the torso forwards. This time around, we're going to do it with cupped fingers. So you don't really want to touch the floor or the mat with your hands. This is to extend the sides of the body, bringing the center of your spine down as you inhale and as you exhale, lengthen the crown of the head towards the hands. Look up at the hands again, roll the shoulders away from your ears and then see if you can extend a little longer, a little lower, bringing the outer shoulder blades and outer armpits down to the ground. Again, buttocks and heels are glued together. Then you can place your hands down and release the head onto the floor. If the head doesn't touch the floor, that's fine. Keep extending from the waist all the way to the head, from the waist all the way to tailbone. Come up onto all fours, spread your hands. Again, lock your elbows, extend your arms, Roll the shoulders back and down, tuck the toes under, revolve the inside of the upper arms out and also anchor the palms. Come up into Adamukha Svanasana or downward facing dog. Again, the focus is in extending the sides of the body. Try to bring the armpits to those knees. So really extend your arms. The most important thing here is first to get that extension in the arms and in the armpits. Then see if you can step back a little further away, hands from feet, and extend the legs, opening the back of the knees, opening the Achilles, opening the thighs. Come down, lengthen your body once more, and then get ready with your broomstick as a measuring tape. We will try to align the right side of the body to that stick. If you don't have a stick, you can use the edge of your mat. Then place the left hand in front of you. You need to make sure that the whole body is in line. So to avoid creating a boomerang shape. Extend the skin of the armpit along the mat. Creep with your hand away from you and then try and glue that armpit to the floor. Release the head on top of the right arm, but then what we want is to start bringing the head up and taking the hand behind your ear. Notice how when we do this action, the armpit shrinks up, but then you have to strive for 
going down again, extending the upper arm from the shoulder to the elbow. Once you have gained that balance, try and see if you can do Tadasana. So big toes together, heels together, hand balancing by your hip, roll over and repeat on the other side. So for this side, I'm going to just turn around uh, in order not to face back to the camera, but you can just roll onto your back and uh, do it on the other side. Similarly to the right, you first want to align your body, then creep your left hand along the mat, along the floor, to try and glue that armpit on the mat. There should be no gap at this moment. If there is, try and flatten that, extending the skin. Make your Tadasana position, lifting the chest up to the chin, and then keeping that under control, keeping the body balanced, lift the hand and put it behind your ear, trying to keep the armpit down on the ground. Once more, try the Tadasana action, flexing your feet and putting the hand by your hip. Lift the abdomen, lift the chest up to the chin. Roll over and then get ready to continue um, standing up in Tadasana, feet parallel and get your broomstick again. Usually we use, um, oh sorry, there's a wardrobe malfunction. Here's the time where we can all rearrange our t-shirts, our hair and get ready again. So I as I was saying, the broomstick is usually replaced by the belt but not many people have a belt at home, so catch the stick with the hands facing forwards and make sure your feet are parallel, close your ribs, lengthen the buttock flesh down and I'm going to show you from the side, from the profile, just so that you can see that's the wrong action, that's the right action, lengthening the buttocks down receding with your ribs back. Now the upper upper arm needs to rotate. You've got to have the intention of breaking that stick. Let me show you from the back. What you want to avoid is scrunching up the shoulder blades at the back. You still want to try and break that stick but without creating wrinkles at the back. So you want to broaden across the shoulder blades as well as broadening across the collarbones and upper upper arms. So Uttanasana to Ardha Uttanasana. Bring your uh, chest down so you're parallel to the floor and then as you bring the body down lower you start lifting your hands. Hopefully you will lift them evenly. Here you can evidently see how with my injured shoulder one arm is going very easily down and the other one is a little bit more stubborn. Now, extend the arms, extend the arms and roll the shoulders away from your neck. Head and neck are hanging so that the sides of the body can lower down. Not all of us will gain that extension of the hand strings or the head is going to come so down. But don't worry, you can do the same action in Ardha Uttanasana where the body is parallel to the floor. Then bring your hands back down and inhale and come back. I will show you the same position on the profile so you can repeat. Feet parallel, draw the thighs up, draw the knees up, avoid going onto your lumbar. So bring the ribs back, bring the hip bones up to the abdomen and then start extending your arms up first. And then as the body goes down lower, you can try to bring your arms over your head and see if you can touch the floor even with your broomstick. Lengthen the head and neck. Allow the head and neck to relax. Bring the hands down by your body and then inhale, look up and come back up. Take a moment. Turn around. This time, we are going to bring the broomstick forwards and make sure you have enough room behind your back so when we go down and back, you don't hit the wall. First action is 
exhale to go down to your side and face the left and right elbows with your nose. Notice how the head is not twisting, so the two ears are the same level. Extend the arms, but roll the shoulders down. And then with an exhalation, see if you can roll the broomstick all the way. Inhale once more, exhale through the difficult part and come back forwards. Always keeping the elbows low and avoid doing all this kind of funny dance with your elbows because I am still watching you. So lift the arms, extend the elbows and roll. You'll notice how the more you do this action, the more flexible the elbow joints, uh, sorry, the shoulder joints uh, become. Then one more time, bring the broomstick behind your neck and try and do Urdhva Hastasana with your arms. So send the broomstick as low as possible by your neck and then extend your arms. Hopefully you will be able to bring your arms closer to your ears. If you have stiffer shoulders like me in this picture, you will have them wider. Bring the broomstick forwards. And now using it, we will try and do Gomukhasana. So I'll show you from the back. Gomukhasana is where we catch the hands to hands at the back and one elbow is up, one elbow is down. However, many of us will not be able to catch or won't have a belt. So in that action, catch the broomstick with both your hands and walk the hands closer to one another along the stick. The right elbow is up and turning in towards your ear. The left elbow is going down, but Keep rotating the upper, upper arm so you can flatten the left elbow into your, uh, the left shoulder blade, sorry, into your spine, into your back. So extend one arm down, the other arm down. And now just in order for you uh, to see the actual classical asana, I'm doing it without the broomstick now. So turn your hand to face back, turn the, fo the uh, upper arm also to face back. And then when you turn the lower hand, notice how the shoulder wants to come inwards. Instead, keep the upper arm rotating back and then turn the palm. Go over your spine and then catch. If you can catch again, Flatten that shoulder blade by rotating the upper arm of the lower elbow and lift the upper elbow up to the sky. Try and see if you can catch and pull a little bit more upwards with your top arm. If you can, look up to create an extension between your sacrum and your upper back. Come back to center, release one arm release the other and extend into dasana again. Now, we are going to come to kind of a shoulder balance. So chatuspadasana, those of us who can catch in front of the ankle will do so. Others like me with shorter arms will place the broomstick underneath your heels Try and step really strongly on the uh, broomstick and catch it with your hands. So as you lift up, you're pressing the feet down onto the broomstick, rolling the thighs in and lifting the mid buttocks. Lift as much as you can whilst you are walking your shoulders closer and closer to your heels. See the vertical armpit chest. Release down and repeat. We can repeat this as many times as we want. Every time you do it, try and come in deeper into the asana. So shoulders walking deeper in towards the heels, lifting the buttocks up, rolling the thighs in and pushing the shins towards the head. Come back down. You can repeat this one more time to go higher. And then... 
what I'm going to show you is how to come down into a Shavasana action or relaxation action. So come with the soles of the feet together, knees apart, lengthen the buttock flesh away from you, extend the legs and release the legs. Also lengthen the base of the skull away from the waist. Observe your breath, relax the face, relax the abdomen, breathe in and out evenly, try not to create any tension in the lower jaw, upper jaw, etc. One man, arm at a time, all over. Bring your hands and Namaste. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.